And by the way, we're on 151. This is where it starts. Fish come in different types. There are fish that have cartilage bones, while others have bony bones. Vertebra made of cartilage versus bony vertebra. Vertebra is your backbone. So we have we have some types of fish that we call cartilage fish that have not yet developed bone, and some types of fish are called bony fish. And we'll talk about both groups. Today we're going to talk about the cartilage fish. Sharks and rays and skates and hagfish and lampreys. Fish are the oldest, largest group of vertebrates. The first fish came around about 500 million years ago. And they've been here ever since, in the oceans. About half of all vertebrate species are fish. So if you add up all the amphibians and reptiles and birds and mammals, there are just as many fish as all those put together. Part of that is because we have, there's more ocean on the earth than there is land. And the fish are in the ocean, so there's a lot of them. And another thing you should probably know is that land uh, vertebrates came from fish. Amphibians evolved from fish. So, fish are pretty important. Your great, 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 million greats, a billion greats come back was a fish. <laughs> um, and this it kind of shows the evolutionary tree. The hagfish and the lamprey are the oldest surviving fish. We call them jawless fish or agnathans. Agnatha means jawless fish, fish without jaws. If you don't have jaws, you can't open and close your mouth. Their mouth is always open. And they go through the water like that. And the water goes, rushes into their mouth and out through their gill slits and they strain the water for food. But there's another thing some of them do. You know what they do? You know what you can do with an open mouth? You can suction onto something and they'll suction onto the side of a fish and suck their blood. Isn't that crazy? Like a for the water. Yeah, we got pictures from them. So those are the agnathans, the jawless fish. And it used to be all the fish were jawless fish, because that was the first to evolve. But then the cartilaginous fish came about, and they had jaws. And when they evolved, they started eating all the agnathans, and we only have a couple species of agnathans left. And those have managed to survive. But the, jaw, the chondrichthyes having jaws were the next evolutionary step, and we're talking about sharks, and rays, and skates, and ratfish. I'll show you a skate. It looks like a ray. It's a little bit different, but no. And so those are your chondrichthians, your cartilaginous fish. They have cartilage skeletons. These things over here have cartilage skeletons, too. So it's a little bit confusing. All of these agnathans and chondrichthians have cartilage skeletons. And then bones evolved, and that's your bony fish. They're called osteichthyes. And there's two kinds. There's ray fin fishes, and there's lobe fin fishes. Which are these on top? Ray fin and lobe fin. We're going to talk about those in a couple days after our shark dissection. Uh, what? Shark dissection. Oh, uh, okay. Do you like that? Heck yeah, you do. So, 
That is the entire array of fish. You said bony fish was lobe finned and what now? Bony fish come in two types, lobe finned and ray finned, R-A-Y. Most bony fish are ray finned, but there's a few called lobe finned, and we're, we're going to look at those lobe finned fish. We were very interested in the lobe finned fish because they evolved arms and legs and became all the land animals over time. So they're, they're interesting to us. So let's talk about the, the agnathans first. There's only two surviving types of agnathans the hagfish and the lampreys. Let's look at the hagfish first. There's about 20 species of hagfish. They eat dead stuff. Dead and dying fish and marine mammals. You know, you think about a dead fish when it dies, it, what's it, what happens to it? Some of them float to the top. But that's only temporary, and then later they kind of decompose and they float to the bottom. And their decomposing bodies are on the bottom of the ocean, and something ends up eating it. Could be a hagfish. So hagfish are eating this on the bottom? Probably so. Is he in the They're probably already done with them. Yeah, they dumped them in the ocean. Really? Yeah. What <laughs> they live in burrows and soft sediments, so they'll dig down into the mud at the bottom of the ocean. Let's uh, let's look up a, a video of Hagfish, shall we? 
Would you like to do that? I didn't get a chance to put these videos on. But, go to YouTube, type in Hackfish. Hackfish sliming video? Yeah. creatures in the seven seas, the one they call the slime eel, the hagfish. Oh, ow. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Wow. There are a lot of hagfish in here. This is absolutely the grossest thing I ever have to do here at work. I mean, look at this stuff. Scientists are fascinated by these creatures. That's why Eddie collects hey, them for the, uh, the back. This list. animal was around way before the dinosaurs, and whatever they're doing, they're doing it right because they're still here. Hagfish are actually among the oldest creatures on Earth. They can't see. They have no jaws or venom. So how did they survive so long? They owe it all to slime. The second you grab them, they just scream right out of your hand. So we have to kind of use tools to transfer them from the trap into a container. Okay. Look at how many times you've done this. It creeps me out every time. A couple stuff back there. They can't even get out of their own slime. Look at that. We're going to give it a bit of a hand here. Reach way in here. Oh. This is the bait. It looked like a perfect mackerel just 12 hours ago. The hatfish go into it, eat it from the inside out, and it turns into that. And I just, I can't hold it anymore. That's just foul. Foul as they may be, hatfish intrigue researchers because they're among the only species that can regulate their oxygen intake, sending oxygen to specific parts of the body. Another reason scientists at Scripps want to study them. Hagfish are amazing animals. They're fish, but they don't have any scales. It doesn't have any fins in them. They're more like an eel. They have this cartilaginous type skeleton, and it's not a hard, bony structure like something you and I have in our bodies. 
It's incredible how long these animals can go without feeding. Maybe six months or even longer. They're spending most of their time just waiting for that seal or dolphin to land next to them so that they can sniff them out and start chomping away at them. All right, feeding time. It looks like just the thing that a hagfish would like to bury its little rasping teeth into. Let's go put it in the tank. All right, hagfish, come and get it. Hagfish may have no mouth nor teeth, but they can take a dead fish apart in hours. They'll even enter the rotting carcass to have better access to the soft meat under the skin. They scrape away at the flesh with tiny raspers, almost like a file. But what makes the hagfish really fascinating and really repulsive is clearly the slime. We've set up a little baby pool here to demonstrate completely non-scientifically just how slimy these hagfish can get. It's freezing cold. So just by disturbing the hagfish a little bit like this, I'm not really squeezing, I'm just kind of putting my hands down on top of them, and any little disturbance gets these guys going. <laughs> this is so weird. But there you go. Just by just touching them, moving them so slightly, they've created this amount of slime right there. Along the side of its body, it's got these slime glands, these white glands right here. It squirts out this protein, mixes with the seawater, and then creates this big slimy mess. It's a defense mechanism. If a predator comes in, it grabs the hagfish like this, and it's trying to eat it. The hagfish swims out of the predator's mouth. The predator's left with this big, gnarly, snotty mess in its mouth. That snotty mess can actually suffocate the attacker. The fish dies choking on slime. It's a human eye. This is ab... But for the hagfish, this is the defense mechanism which has kept them alive for 500 million years. Hopefully they'll be doing it for millions of years more. Yay. Where was it catching? I don't know where that was. Young is tough, the tough use. <laughs> sucker-like mouth and consuming blood, tissue, and body fluids. Are those things on the bottom of sharks? Those are different. Those little fish that are attached to the bottom of sharks, they aren't sucking the shark's blood, they're just attached to them. So are they the remoras is what they're called. And they'll, what they'll do is when the shark is eating something, the shark's kind of a messy eater and the stuff falls off and they'll, they'll detach and eat attach back. And nothing's going to mess with them if they're on a shark. So it's kind of a good way, easy way to live. Do but those they, are different from lamprey. Do they kill when they do that? Yes, these, can, these things are parasites. So they're kind of like ticks and things. They can kill, but they won't necessarily kill. 
Sometimes they'll just feed until they're full and then they'll let go. But it hurts. Um, I think they inject a material that a, some, a substance that keeps the fish from feeling them. So it won't knock them off. Kind of like a, a, a leech does to a person. That's a good question, though. I don't know. Maybe the lampreys, maybe they, it does hurt the fish. I, I don't know for sure. I'm just guessing. It, they would have probably evolved something that would allow them to feed without the fish feeling it. Lampreys look a lot like hagfishes. They're, they're long and tube-like. They have an open mouth. Looks like an eel. By the way, an eel is a fish, if you're wondering. It's a bony fish, so we're going to talk about eels. So there is a lamprey. See, like I said, it's tube-like. They have seven gill slits. The water goes in their mouth and comes out the gill slit, and they get oxygen from the water. And they have this oral disc, is what it's called. Now, it can't close its mouth, so you could stick your finger in there and it couldn't bite down on it. But if you let it swim up to, to your skin, it could stick that oral disc onto your skin and then suck, and it pushes the oral disc down tightly, and it will push those little teeth through your skin. So it's just pretty much a giant leech. Have they ever done it? It's like a giant leech. Can they do it to humans? I don't know. I don't know if they would do it to humans or not. Do they produce slime? That would be nasty. These don't produce slime. What kind of eels do we have here? Uh, I Swimmers 
were well prepared, and it was time to take the plunge. When you're swimming in water this cold, your body temperature drops quickly, especially your skin temperature. Everything was going well, though. Until two hours into the race, the swimmers hit the four-mile mark, and they realized they had company. I felt something on my leg, and I turned around, and I saw this big snake this size attached to my, to my leg. from the lamprey's powerful jaws. The sea lampreys were introduced by accident. They don't really belong here. Uh, there are millions of them, and they, they try to get a blood meal any way they can, so they'll latch onto most anything. Uh, the fish that are in the lakes are their main target. That's where they get their food, but anything that's, that's there is fair game for them to try to get blood from. Uh, the people that are scratched by them can get secondary bacterial infections. Uh, if any skin is broken, but usually they're not life-threatening type problems for people. With these water-loving leeches and lampreys, would you be safe if you stayed well away from the water? Population. That's shark sex. 
So you can always tell a male shark from a female shark if you look at the, the rear fin of the shark, which is called the anal fin, it'll have these little extra pair of fins called claspers. And they use them when they're having sex. So that's how you tell, tell a male shark from a female shark. So if you look on page 154, it shows the shark's body. You need to know the names of these fins. The dorsal fins are the ones on the top. The pectoral fins stick out to the sides. There's usually two fins on the bottom. The pelvic fin is the frontmost fin, and the anal fin is the rearmost fin. The tail is called a caudal fin. Sharks have what's called a heterocercal part of caudal fin, where the upper part of the caudal fin is longer than the lower part of the caudal fin. The upper lobe is longer than the lower lobe. If you look at this bony fish here, most bony fish have homocercal caudal fins, which means the top and bottom are about the same. Although in this picture it looks like the bottom is a little longer, but they're pretty close. There's the spiracle, the little opening where water comes in. So it can have its mouth closed, but water is still going through into its um, oral cavity and out through the gill slits. Sharks always have five to seven gill slits. Bony fish have a special thing called an operculum that covers their gill slits. And look at the scales. The shark has scales that are kind of shaped like arrowheads. They're called placoid scales. Different from the smooth, the round scales of a fish, which are called cycloid or stenoid scales. Have you ever heard if you rub a shark backwards, it's, it hurts, it's like sharp? That's these scales. You're going to take a piece of shark skin and look at these scales under the microscope. And then when we do our fish dissection, you'll take fish skin and look at those scales. We'll see they're different. Ever caught a shark? That's Try to rub it backwards? I pet one underwater. Did you pet it backwards? Yeah. Pet it forward. And when you flip them upside down, they like go in the, you know, they go into the gaze. Oh, do they? So, you know how some animals do that? I've heard you of that before. I've never done it. Their stomach, <laughs> yeah. And I was scuba diving and our guide did it and the shark just laid there like it was dead. Oh, really? And right when he flipped it back over, it was Took it off? If you, if you like slap a shark in the head really hard before you throw it back, it'll like do flips out of the water. Oh, really? And then it'll die. Then it'll die? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Look at those shark's jaws. I saw the Smithsonian. That's from an extinct species. Megalodon? I'm not sure what it's called. Megalodon? What's that? Yeah, those, those are real. That's the fossil jaws of it. You can see all the different types of sharks on 155. There's actually like 350 species. This just shows some of the... Bastion shark. Big old boy. Big old shark. That looks like you have to put in it. Whoops. Hold on. Look at that one. Yeah, where can we get fish? Hammerheads. Sand tiger. Tiger, 13 footer. You know you know that when you know what I see. Tails are looking for the dorsal. 
I took these in uh, Gal the Galapagos. They had just right on the beach. There's sharks all in the water there. I'm standing on the beach there. That's the two feet of water. Did you guys swim? No, the sharks. <laughs> See, there we go. They're right in the waves that are crashing. You could have done your own shark There's a, when, here's, I was diving. This is when I was snorkeling chasing around a shark. White tip. See? That's me. We are chasing around these reef sharks. They, the, the guy said they wouldn't mess with us. There's a place in Belize called Shark and Stingray Alley. I had a, sh I had a shark behind me there, and I was trying to snap my picture with a shark behind me, but I missed it. That's true. That was true. So we're kind of out of time here, but uh, read, uh, read through page 156, and we have more time. Uh, Monday, we're going to spend on a shark guy section. Tomorrow, um, I'm not going to be here. There's going to be a sub. And uh, she's going to show you a video, a fish video. And uh, you might have a quiz over the reading through 156. So make sure you do the reading. Read up to bony fish. Those are, uh, those are deep water, I think. Well, they'd be off the coast.